In this video, I'd like to share with you a new concept. A concept of varying the size of the side port paracentesis incision depending on what stage of the phaco emulsification procedure you're at. The main aim of doing this is to be able to achieve a stable anterior chamber throughout the phaco emulsification procedure. This patient with pseudo exfoliation and a grade 2 to 3 nucleus sclerosis is posted for cataract surgery. Let's understand the instruments a little more closely. The 2.8 keratome entry remains quite standard. This is a biplanar clear corneal incision and as long as the surgeon goes straight in and straight out, there's no question of any change in the width of the incision. Let's now move to understand what should be the correct sizing of both the paracentesis incisions. The next incision that I create on the left is the one which I use for irrigation aspiration alone. Now this incision has to be at least large enough to allow for a 20 or a 21 gauge irrigation aspiration cannula. Clearly you would have understood by now that the way in which we increase the width of the incision is by progressively increasing the extent to which the lens tip is introduced into the eye. Please note in the above image the extent to which the tip of the lens tip has to enter into the eye to be able to create a paracentesis incision that will allow for the ease of instrumentation, that is the ease of the irrigation aspiration entering the eye. Now let's look at the second paracentesis incision. Now this is the incision which allows for the entry and the exit of the second instrument which could be a Sinsky hook or a ball dialer or a chopper, either short or long, after the nuclear emulsification changes to the irrigation aspiration. So here's the point I'd like to make. Whilst performing the nuclear emulsification and up to the end of nuclear emulsification, the size of the incision required is really much tinier. And thus, for the first part of the surgery, it's well worth making the incision really tiny. And then I'll show you what we can do when we get to the point of the irrigation aspiration. Let's see how blue dye staining of the anterior capsule also eventually results in staining of the incisions and let's have a better look to understand what is the size of the three incisions created. The one on the left which is the one which me being a left-handed surgeon would only use for the irrigation aspiration and you can see it's larger. The one on the right which I would use for my chopper or my dialer is currently much tinier than the one on the left. And this second instrument is perfectly sized to allow for the ease of the entry and the movement of the second instrument as you can see. The dialer and the choppers of different length can most easily and comfortably move in and out of the eye. There doesn't seem to be any struggle in negotiating these instruments in and out of the eye. We proceed with the surgery by performing the capsular rexis, the hydrodissection, and then the nucleus management. Now during the nuclear emulsification, to start with the surgeon uses a chopper when the surgeon emulsifies the nucleus. Please note the appearance of the side port incision. Note the way in which the instruments go in and out without any struggle. And note that this size of incision is so perfect that it doesn't allow for any excessive egress of fluid through it, which could result in a surge, shallowing and its own level of problems. The surgeon performs the direct chop technique, breaks down the nucleus into smaller fragments and completes the nuclear emulsification in this manner. Upon the completion of nuclear emulsification and prior to irrigation aspiration, this is the point when we should enlarge the second paracentesis incision. The main advantage of this step is that 
only at this point when you require a slightly larger incision that is to allow for the introduction of the irrigation aspiration cannulas it is only at this point you have enlarged the incision in this manner by varying the size of the second side port incision during the different steps of the surgery you are actually able to achieve an optimal stability of the anterior chamber the rest of the surgery will just depict the irrigation aspiration the introduction of the lens the visco wash and finally the stromal hydration